An ancient fever in the Mediterranean stumped doctors for over 2,000 years, and only now are we uncovering its mysteries. This fever is called familial Mediterranean fever. It reoccurs periodically, causes arthritis, rashes, inflamed tissues, and runs in families. The fever mainly affects Arab, Armenian, Jewish, and Turkish people, and it can be deadly. But its cause was unknown until genetics and genomics took the case. In 1997, researchers identified which gene causes the fever disease, and here's how the disease unfolds. Now, a person usually gets one copy of a gene from each parent. These copies can come in different flavors. Let's call them variants. A person needs to get the same variant in the MEFV gene from each parent to develop the fever. If you only get one variant, then you're considered a carrier and usually don't get a fever. Scientists at the National Institutes of Health and others found that 10% of Mediterranean populations are carriers of the variant. That's one in 10 people of Arab, Armenian, Jewish, and Turkish heritage. The question is, why do so many carry the variant if having two copies causes a potentially deadly fever? To figure this puzzle out, we must think evolutionarily. Over hundreds of generations, humans have encountered many diseases, especially infectious ones, like the bubonic plague, tuberculosis, malaria, and COVID-19. What's incredible is we can read the evidence of encountering such infections within our genomes, but not in the way you'd think. One way we evolve and adapt to our environment is through changes in our DNA code. Many of these DNA changes accumulate and pass down through generations. If a DNA change improves whether we successfully reproduce as a species, that variant is more likely to be passed on. If the variant reduces our reproduction by, say, causing a deadly disease, it's less likely to be passed on. This process is natural selection, one of evolution's primary engines. But sometimes, even a variant that's harmful to a few individuals can be passed on because it increases the survival of the population as a whole. This evolutionary compromise meant specific Mediterranean populations kept a variant that could cause a deadly disease like familial Mediterranean fever. To figure out why, let's talk about how the MEFE variants caused the fever. Our immune system usually only switches on when we face a threat of infection. But for a person with two copies of the variant, the immune system can activate when there is no infection. This causes dangerous levels of immune reactions that make the person sick. People with one copy of the MEFE variant are unable to turn off their immune system either, but they don't have such disastrous outcomes. In fact, when faced with an even greater threat, having one variant kept them alive. That greater threat? The bubonic plague! Scientists figured out that by keeping the immune system running, having even one variant actually protected people from being infected by the plague. So natural selection filtered that one MEFE variant into next generations as a consequence of survival. Because even though familial Mediterranean fever killed thousands of people, the plague killed millions. Collective changes in our DNA code haven't helped us conquer all infections, but we have endured many of them thanks to these kinds of compromises throughout human history. Another such compromise is between sickle cell anemia and malaria. Having even one copy of the variant that causes sickle cell anemia can protect someone from getting malaria. We can use these principles of natural selection to understand and treat human illnesses. For ancient ones like familial Mediterranean fever and malaria, to modern ones like asthma, heart disease, and addiction. Ultimately, by looking into the past, we're beginning to address how we can fight the diseases of now and the diseases of the future.